Oh, oh. Stop so low. That was scary, guys. I'm scared. Hello, YouTube. Firstly, I need to announce to everyone that we have hit YouTube partner. So big thanks to all of you guys for your support, and I'll continue to put more effort into making these videos going forward. This is the first video we're making since hitting that goal, so let's get this going. Additionally, I did try to do some other stuff to try make production quality higher. Uh, I couldn't quite get the setup going how I intended it to, which is pretty unfortunate, so I'll do more research into making that all happen and getting things functioning. And well, I was trying to set up my phone as a camera for OBS, and then I could do many more edits and have multiple views and all of that kind of stuff. So unfortunately, the camera quality did come out pretty mediocre and I couldn't get it past 30 FPS. So until I figure that out, we're still stuck back into this kind of you see my hands point of view, but I'll continue to look to improve on that. So stay tuned for more videos coming out because we are going to try to do more and more things going on. However, for a quick change, we're going to start adding some BGM. So I did ask everyone in the community, hey, you guys think I should add some BGM? And everyone's like, yeah, that'd be great. Three, two, one, music. <laughs> So today we're talking about the Zeos Rinko keycap set and IEM. In addition, you might now see a custom one-on-one -on -one Yifang X-Ray Pad Aqua Control 2, which will be reviewed tomorrow. Uh, no, you cannot buy this, but if you guys do want something like this, make sure you go check out their sales, or if you do want this exact one, I guess I can share you guys the file so you can print your own too. And the mystery mouse that I have been maining for the past month or month and a half has now been revealed. It is the RTS Plus 4K edition. I'll review this later, the thought never crossed my mind when I got it that this could potentially become a main, but for some reason this has magically become my main, so we'll talk more about that in the review upcoming. So the Zeos Rinko IEM and keycap set. Now this kind of all started with the Darmo Shark M3 video, which I did previously. Metkeys contacted me, they sent me the stuff, and in case you guys didn't know, Metkeys also co-owns Hi-Fi Go, so the keycap set's on there, the IEMs are on Hi-Fi Go, but you can also get the IEMs on Metkeys, and it's just a bit of a you can buy them from anywhere. So they sent me this as well as the mouse. The mouse has been reviewed, now it's onto this. I also forgot to mention, as you can see, we kind of have a yellow lighting today and my hands are having shadows. So unfortunately, me fiddling around, writing scripts, testing different things has consumed quite a bit of time. And we are in winter here in Australia, so the sun goes down a bit earlier, the lighting wasn't too good. And unfortunately, I've missed the time for my natural lighting. It's also a main reason of why I only do videos in the weekends because I can do them during the day when I have proper lighting instead of this shadowy, reflective, whatever. But I had to get this video done, so we're gonna have to deal with that today. This is a collaboration between C Audio and Hi-Fi Go and Z Reviews. So if you don't know who Z Reviews is, you should go watch his channel. He does audio stuff. Now, I've been a long-term Zeos fan. I probably shouldn't say that nowadays because people say he's deaf, but since like six to seven years ago, I have watched some of his videos, especially there was a video on the Bear Dynamic MMX 300. I bought that headset at the time, I've used it for quite a long time, and Basically, I still hold that headset in regards as potentially the best gaming headphone you can buy on the market. The microphone on that thing is insane. It is definitely the best microphone on a headset I've ever tried. And the spatial cues for games is also insane. So if you guys are looking for a headset for games, just go buy that. Nowadays, Zero say some really questionable things when it comes to some audio stuff, but I still watch him for the fun. Don't take things he says too seriously, okay? Make sure you do proper research if you guys are considering audio products. Zeros has done a lot of collabs. I've never owned any of them though. This is the first Zeos collabs I've gotten to try. Up until now, all I know is his collabs just involved boosting bass on existing IEMs, and well, the bass on this is quite something. He's also a big weeb, just like me. You'll see that present in all his videos and collabs, and that's why there's all this anime girl printing on them. Yeah, I'm a fan, woo! So I'll start with the uh, introduction, right? The keycaps here are 70 US dollars and the IEM is 100 US dollars. Now, if you bought this together as a set, you get $10 off and it becomes 160 US dollars. Now it's pretty difficult for me to review keycap sets because they're just a keycap set. That's how I see it anyway. And I'm not the most picky person when it comes to that. This is a PBT set not a ABS set. You get 156 keys in it. They are cherry profile, ANSI layout, and I'm pretty happy with the way it turned out. You get a lot of extras to go with, and well, you'll see that on the keyboard here. I find these pretty nice. The touch was nice, the sound's okay. I don't really listen to keyboard sounds anyway, and I've just had no problem with them. The build quality on my ones were fine as well. I think it was pretty good value. 
before you keyboard people would start yapping about, oh, it's just Chinese PBT. Like, I don't give a shit what you think, okay? I had GMK keycaps that cost way more than this. And to me, at least, I really don't care as much. So I think giving me all these extras is pretty good. Now, obviously you can buy cheaper keycap sets with the same kind of quality and same kind of stuff, but I'm happy, all right? I'm happy with how this is. That's the end of the keycap review. Now I tried to do some B-rolling, but it didn't quite turn out how I wanted it to. Nonetheless, you guys can watch this short section of videos that I'm editing in now. Now, on to the main item of the review, the Zeo Srinko IEM. So as always, I gotta give you guys a quick summary, right? Basically, this is a very enjoyable IEM for genres that excel on bass. Mids and vocals are surprisingly good with enough presence and warmth, but the bass is definitely the key feature and occasionally does feel overpowering. Treble is quite muted, and that treble mute really does affect harmonics, so instrumentals and timbre definitely sound off on these IEMs. If you are listening to proper instruments, then they might not sound quite right to you, but at least there's no sibilance and fatigue at all. Technicalities are great, and I can definitely recommend these. Moving on to details, unboxing, and build quality. As you can see, the box comes with the anime waifus printed on the front. Um, by the way, when I first saw it, I saw all these markings on the front. It's all part of the design of the box, but initially I was like, damn, like, what is this dust on it? So if you guys see this, that's a print on the box, not actually something wrong with it. But you open it up and you get greeted with the anime girl print. It's reflective as well. It's a stand. Can't wait to display this on my shelf. Another card from C Audio, introduction manual. And you'll get greeted with the IEM sitting in the box that I've already taken out, as well as the carry case with the cable and stuff inside of it. Now, even this this carry case, right? It's like a wedding ring thing. Like you pop it open, it's like that. Like, like oh my god, right? Now, knowing me, I think I'll never need to do this to anyone, but it's a good practice, right? If you guys are about to propose to your loved ones, make sure you do some practice. This is a perfect practicing tool. So the stock cable that comes on this thing is pretty mediocre. I mean, what can you really expect from these budget Chinese IEMs? Uh, I have been using my own cable here from Gladiator Cables. Shout out to the bro Antonio for making me all the cables. If you guys are interested in buying an upgrade cable just so you can use it with all your IEMs going into the future for better build quality or whatever, like do give that a look because this is one damn nice cable. So bringing over the IEMs themselves. Right, now we've got them here in hand. They are quite small and should fit into everyone's ears. Now, I personally wanted them a bit bigger. The fit wasn't actually the best for me because they're too small. Most people don't have that problem. They usually have problems with IEMs being too big, but this was the same kind of experience that I had with the 64 Audio U12T or the Campfire Andromeda, which also just had terrible fit because they were too small. The ear tips as well are very unique. These are new ear tips that come with the uh, IEMs. You can also buy these separately. And in theory, this might just be an ideal ear tip because it is a combination of foam and silicon. On the edge here, you have a silicon layer, and then on the inside, it is foam. And why that's ideal is because the foam prevents bass loss, and the big opening and bore also means that uh, treble extension is kept good. So in theory, the air tips are supposed to be really good. And when I did compare these to just pure silicon tips that I had, they definitely did add that extra bit of bass. However, of the three sizes you get, by the way, the stock one put on the IEMs will be black and that is the medium size. This tan color one is the small and the red one is the big one. But I do want to say like, bro, why does this thing look like some weird sex toy? Like what the... Look at that! Huh, am, am, I, am I tripping? Like you guys seen this bro? Like, you know? I mean... I guess it's to be expected that this came from Zeus, but but still, like, oh my god, come on, man. So moving on to the driver configuration. This is a new driver configuration that they've done. It is one dynamic driver and one planar magnetic. So the dynamic driver is primarily for bass, and the planar actually does the whole spectrum. And then when you combine the dynamic and the planar in that bass section, well, you get some pretty goddamn good bass. 
Now, if you guys don't know what a planet magnetic driver is, uh, you can go do your own research and look at the advantages or disadvantages of planet magnetic. But essentially, planet magnetics are super low distortion, clean, highly technically resolving, and have really good sub-bass extension. In summary, they're just a really, really good driver type. High-end headphones are primarily dominated by planar magnetic driver setups. Uh, obviously, you have electrostats and the occasional couple of dynamics, but realistically speaking, everyone does end up using planars. Electrostats are quite a pain and more expensive to do. We'll move into the frequency response and start talking about the audio. The first thing I need to reiterate to people who are coming to look at this for the first time, or those who can read frequency graphs, but they're not too familiar with things behind it. Now with frequency responses of IEMs, anything at around 8,000 kilohertz and beyond can be pretty much ignored because there are limitations in the actual measuring devices. And then by then you start having these problems. So it's not actually accurate. You look at the graph and you'll see this huge 8K hertz spike, but in reality, that's not actually present or there might be a spike, but you can never actually measure it properly because there's an inherent limitation in our technology and the way we do things. We can ignore everything beyond the 8K Hertz region. Our primary focus is roughly from that 20 to 6,000-ish region. So we'll talk about bass. This bass is nuts. I, I approve of this bass, right? If you're, if you're a bass head, just buy this, you're done. There's really not much more for me to say here. Like whether it's in sub-bass extension or mid-bass, this thing slaps, man. Like this thing slaps, right? It's definitely by far the best bass on any IEM I have reviewed on this channel so far. And the reason for that is the dynamic driver is giving you that big slam and that mid-bass is thumping. But that planar magnetic driver is also giving it that sub-bass extension, which is what dynamic drivers usually suck at, right? So sub-bass is that rumbling, background vibration kind of sound that a lot of modern day electronic music will have. And the mid bass is the thumping of an actual like beat drop when it hits and it goes dun, 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 right? The dynamic driver is giving it all that added weight onto that mid bass where the planar magnetic is actually giving it proper sub bass extension and giving you that rumble. I am truly a fan here, right? The two drivers here are combined just for the bass. And that is some nice bass on this, especially with these air tips. So I'll play you guys a few songs and you can hopefully understand what I mean. Now, the mids are okay. I was expecting significant bass blow into the lower mids, but it wasn't actually as present as I thought it'd be. In terms of on poorly done bass heavy audio products, there's a poor separation line between where bass is and where the lower mids are. And so when you start listening to things that have lower mids, for example, your, your cellos, your lower range piano hits, those poorly separated audio products will make those things sound way out of proportion compared to how they actually should be. However, this actually did it pretty well separated. Now, there's no doubt that it is still quite warm and depending on the track itself, it can make that region feel a bit muddy, but nonetheless, it's within an acceptable realm. The 1.5 to 4k hertz upper mid boost is something I personally do enjoy because it really does make vocals pop forward, especially those female vocals, those high pitched, sharp female vocals that you just want to hear and make you go, oh, that was nice. The problem lies in that mids region being sucked out, right? In that lower mids region that is sucked out and giving it a bit of lack in clarity. So sound is all relative. And as humans, we are most sensitive to mids region. So everything we hear normally is mids. Our voices, our instruments, things are mids. And so when you listen to stuff, you will turn the volume up to the point where you can hear mids properly, right? When the mids sound okay to you, that's when you turn the vol that's when you stop turning the volume knob. It's only at that point where the mids are okay to you that you start to notice the lower and the upper region being too exaggerated in certain ways. For example, when you say things are bass boosted, that's because you turn the volume up to a point where you can start hearing the mids properly and then the bass is very strong and overpowering, then you say, oh, this is bass boosted. Or you turn it up and you hear the mids, but then some high pitched noise comes in and you're screeching, your ears are bleeding. You're like, oh, that was sharp. Very shouty, very sharp then that just means the treble region, the upper region is a bit too much for you. 
So we turn the mids up until we hear things and then we start considering lowers and uppers. So in this case, there is definitely a bit of a lack in clarity relative to the other regions in that mids because the mids are a bit sucked out and that lower region is quite boosted. But nonetheless, some people might enjoy that. Now, as we can see on the frequency response graph, treble is definitely quite a bit muted. And no matter what volume I listened to these things on, there was no sibilance or sharpness and fatigue hitting me. Right, when I had to turn the volume down, it was because the volume itself was just too loud. It wasn't to the point where I'm like, oh, that treble boost though, however, it's too sharp and I need to turn that part down. But as a result, sacrifice the rest of the listening range. The most important thing to note about the treble though, is that that huge treble reduction that you see throughout that entire treble region, by the way, ignoring that peak, ignoring the 8kHz peak and the other peak, the reduction really affects harmonics. And when harmonics are affected, it makes things sound off, right? Timbre is off. Which just means that you listen to some instruments and you can tell, hey, yeah, that's a piano, hey, that's a violin. But does that piano actually sound exactly like how a piano would sound if you heard it in real life? And that is where harmonics kick in, or we can call it timbre. So that treble reduction does start to make harmonics and timbre sound quite off. So if you are here to listen to proper instruments, do note that this isn't particularly the best thing for that. It does make things sound a bit off. Also, the tracks that did need sharp attack were kind of missing that. There were times when I'm like, oh, that beat drop was nice, but where, where's the upper? Where's the, where's the little thing or the whatever that I'm used to listening for? Uh, it just wasn't there. Now, depending on your listening preferences, your genres and whatever, that might not be a problem. So speaking of genres, all EDM sounds amazing on this. You can crank that knob and there was no fatigue in that upper region, right? So by the time you're like, oh, this is getting a bit loud, the bass is big and powerful and you get that head thumping rave nightclub kind of vibe that if that's what you're seeking, then this is it. And another genre I think is quite interesting to talk about here is J-pop. Now, why J-pop? Well, the first thing is J-pop does mixing really weird. Right, if you guys go listen to some J-pop songs, and that's something I've noticed regardless of whether I'm listening to J-pop songs from 20 years ago or more recently. They have heaps of electronic instruments or electronic sounds, whether that be electric guitars or artificially created electronic music. However, when they do their mixing, all the J-pop songs for some reason just don't have bass. They live on the upper mids and treble region. That's what they crank up on J-pop music. And so if you listen to a lot of J-pop, you listen to Lisa, you listen to Yasobi, and you're like, oh, I'm always missing a bit of bass on this. I wish when they drop the beats, they hit harder. Then this is the I am for you. this will fix that problem. But on the contrary, if you listen to J-pop and you enjoy that upper region boost, you enjoy that sharp crunch attack, especially on the more recent Yasobi Idol made for Oshinoko. If you like all of that electronic sounds popping around, sharp attack or whatever, then this might make that feel a bit lacking in that area for you. So this is purely up to your preferences. Most genres that involve proper instruments would not be suited for this IM. That timbre issue, that harmonics issue from the treble region, uh, really do make it sound a bit wrong. But if you only listen to like modern pop music, modern rap music, electronic, heavily processed artificial stuff, I cannot recommend this enough. So we'll move to the technicalities and gaming performance. Resolution is nuts. And that's to be expected of the planar magnetic driver. However, the details don't pop out as much as you'd expect them to. And you'll probably need to be a trained listener familiar with your tracks to look for those details. So once again, that's because of that treble reduction and bass being really strong. And so your ability as a listener really does kick into effect here because those details don't just pop in front of you and shove it in your face. You don't notice it's there. You have to go searching for them. So if you're a trained listener, you're really familiar with your songs, you know where things are, and you listen specifically for that one thing that you're trying to find, then you'll notice that everything is there. But if you're just like 
sitting there listening, zoned out, then maybe the details don't pop out at you as much as you'd expect it to. So while the initial resolution might not blow you away on your first listen, you're just like, wow, this is so resolving, this is still definitely the most resolving IEM I have reviewed on this channel. Separation is superb. There's no doubt in my mind in this aspect. Resolution and separation are closely linked, but in this case, the separation is excellent. Right, regardless of whether you're a trained listener listening for those specific details, sounds can be clearly identified and separated from each other. The clean separation is immediately noticeable when you try Planars for the first time, and you'll notice that in this. Unfortunately, sound staging is average. It's a pretty common IEM problem. It's just a generic IEM sound stage. Not much more to talk about for sound staging. Dynamics though, go crazy. And I believe that's because of the tuning in this. Now dynamics are something that has to do with driver technicalities, but at the same time, tuning can also give you a false perception of dynamics. And that's where this thing has that effect. Because you'll turn up the volume to hear that mid the upper region, because that, that thing is recessed. And because the bass is pretty cleanly separated, there's quite a contrast between when there's no bass kicking into effect versus when the bass suddenly slaps in. You listen to the upper mids, the lower treble region at an okay volume, you're like, okay, okay, and then bang, that bass kicks in at like a significantly louder volume. And then all of a sudden you're like, oh my God, that is, that is some contrast there, right? And that really does give you a false sense of dynamics. Now, some genres benefit from that, some genres don't, and that's obviously up to your listening preferences once again. Lastly, for positional audio slash gaming, as much as the technicalities on this IEM are good, I don't think this IEM is something that you want to buy for gaming. The staging in itself, right, the positional audio becomes a little bit weird because the upper region is really recessed and there's there's inconsistencies in trying to find positional audio. Uh, additionally, I can definitely see the bass overpowering other sounds when you're, say, in a shooting game and you're taking shots, there's gunfire, there's grenades and whatever. The bass is probably going to cover up quite a bit of the sound. Even though there's quite clean separation, you can certainly miss those details if you're an untrained listener because they're just not as present. And so for gaming, that's not ideal. So now we have to ask the most important question. How does this affect LeBron's legacy? Should you buy this? Or who should buy this? Well, like I said before, if you mostly listen to modern processed music and electronic stuff, then by all means, this will blow you away. Regardless if you're a bass head or not, if you want to try some good bass without going into the high-end audio prices, give this a go. If you're purely after a gaming IEM, I recommend looking elsewhere. The Simgot EA500 that I previously reviewed is actually really, really good. Like I can't praise it enough. I don't think I praised it enough in that video that I made for it. If you are a classical, jazz, orchestral, or general acoustic song enjoyer, like even like Ed Sheeran or J Chow or whatever, proper singer, proper band, then perhaps look elsewhere. Once again, want to thank metkeys slash hi go for sending me this stuff for review hope they watch this video and enjoy it hope you guys get to try some good stuff here and hopefully i can get all the videos into higher production quality going forward put more time into things and make it all a more enjoyable experience for you guys now being that youtube partner also means we can start earning through ad revenue obviously i don't expect it to do much for me at this point but hopefully as we get bigger i can put those funds back into the production and that will be something good for all of us so, see you guys tomorrow in the next review.